Welcome back. Now, uh, to other stories, and uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration in an earlier statement warned that traveling public to avoid non-essential travels to the uh, capital city of Nigeria due to um, unpredictable security situation in the city and uh, uh, communicate from local authorities directing hotels operating in residential buildings to shut down. My colleague Kofi EJ uh, joins me through Zoom with de the full details of that communique. Kofi, uh, what does the earlier statement say? Okay, so uh, now uh, still on this particular story, uh, we understand the ministry has reversed this directive and is working on that. We, we've been joined on the line by lead security analyst with SBM Intelligence in Nigeria, uh, Confidence McHarry. Uh, first of all, Confidence, can, can you confirm such directive was issued to hotels in Nigeria? We, we can we can independently uh, can independently confirm that uh, this particular directive is coming a few weeks after the US, the UK, and some some of the European partners issued a similar directive concerning uh, suspected threats on American interests in Abuja. So for for one hand, it could be seen as uh, a, a knee jerk reaction to such threats, especially from the diplomatic community that believe that the threat has not gone away. Uh, when I woke up this morning that I saw the disclaimer from the Ghana, Ghana's foreign ministry about the earlier uh, advisory issued, uh, the first instinct I had was that the Nigerian government may have talked to the Nigerian government about uh, the impact of what that thing could have, that such a directive could have. You know. uh, but for now, the, the question really is, if the Ghanaian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration is denying the release of that communicate. The question is, who released the communicate in the first place? So that's exactly what we are trying to find out. Well, Mark, um, let's still stay on it. What do you make of Ghana's decision to advise travelers against traveling to Abuja? In the first place, it's a responsible thing for any government to do, for any citizens traveling to high-risk environments. Nigeria, unfortunately, is part of such high-risk environments. And it's, of course, it's not surprising that the, the adversary is coming at this point. As I said earlier, the US, the UK, and its European partners did a similar thing. The current state in which Nigeria's capital, Abuja, is in now, it's not the best of states. Uh, in, in March, uh, there was an attack on a train very close to the capital, in the Kaduna Abuja uh, railway center service. Which, in which over 100 uh, uh, victims were abducted. And over the following months, we have seen repeated attacks by the Islamic State, uh, not only in a medium security prison facility in the capital, but also in an Nigerian law school, uh, not too far away. And so we, the, the capital is, uh, from all sides, being infiltrated by terrorists, not necessarily on the uh, jihadist front, but also economic terrorists looking to make a living of the highway. So, yes, the capital is, is a bit more high risk than normal, and such kind of advisory, unfortunately, is this especially for people that are doing this as a thing. I think this will be than the highest state at which it was as of July, or about a month ago when United States decided to pull out all essential staff in their embassy in Abuja. Well, uh, but, but run us through the current security situation of, of, of the city and in Nigeria now, as, as we're talking to you. What is it like? In, in, in the country, we, we, are, we currently are experiencing a couple of security challenges. It depends on the geopolitical zone we currently are. If you're in the northeast, of course, the Boko Haram situation continues to fester. Uh, recently, the Islamic State mentioned that uh, there are some particular areas, especially around in the Chad region, where the use of Nigerian Naira has been banned. As a result, they have decided to adopt the CFO franc as the currency of transaction. And if you go to the northwest, you have a couple of armed groups, um, both jihadists and non-jihadists in nature, trying to carve out a, a territory of operation away from the Nigerian state as you know it. In the North Central, you're also having the same thing, pastoral conflict between uh, farmers, headers, and also not necessarily pastoral conflict, but 
uh, in Rumi that people are trying to uh, engage in the acts of ethnic cleansing. And unfortunately, that this North Central is where the capital Abuja currently is situated. And in the north, in the southwest, you're having criminal groups such as uh, youth gangs, uh, you know, uh, disrupting the peace. In the south, south, a similar situation was with the water factor into it, the the piracy on the Gulf of Guinea moving in. And several other issues in the southeast, a very wave faction trying to revive the state of Biafra, which the situation has brought into an open conflict between the military and uh, in a way, a youth that are loyal to the cause. But what's the, what is much more central to the point in uh, the geopolitical spread of Nigeria's security issue is the issue of kidnap for ransom, which permits uh, every other security issue across the country. So. The FCC, being geographically in the middle of Nigeria, is caught in the middle, and it's outlying satellite towns because the FCC is the creation of uh, some states in the north central. We're talking about states like Ngi, Nasarawa, and there are several others. So the security situation in those areas where the FCC was capped from uh, is unfortunately spilling into the FCC. So these satellite towns in places like Niger and Nasarawa state that have seen repeated attacks by armed groups in the past. I've been to look at the post state of security in Abuja and try to make it pay for it. And unfortunately, uh, Islamist groups, just such as the Islamic State, are also buying into the idea and came into the last security situation to also carry out attacks. So, in the meantime, although the, the presidential area, which is also is yet to the attack, the, the attacks are now moving away from the satellite towns into uh, also many other parts of town. And that's exactly mm -hmm. where the issue with the, the advisory is coming in at the moment. Makari, I'm, I'm grateful that you could join us. Confidence Makari is lead security analyst with SBM Intelligence in Nigeria. Now.